よ These are eight camera ideas that you can start using today. So for the shot, you will need a skateboard, obviously. This is basically the alternative way for using a gimbal. It doesn't stabilize your footage 100%, but it will do the job. As you can see, the skateboard can make a huge difference to your videos. This is probably one of my favorite things to do. And the best time to do this is obviously during sunrise or sunset. What you want to do is, is to make sure that your sun is behind your subject and that your exposure is right. I've seen a lot of beginner filmmakers expose for the subject and not for the sky when filming a sunset. If you do this, then you won't get a silhouette look. So what you want to do is, is to make sure that you expose for the sky and not for the subject. This will give you the silhouette look that everyone likes. I've shot countless videos like this. And the reason why it is one of my favorite shots to do is because it is one of the easiest ways to make your videos cinematic and you don't need a lot of lighting equipment to make the shot work. Yes, holding your camera at a normal height is fine, but when filming a moving subject, if you hold your camera low to the ground, it will make your subject look faster. The movement of the road close to the camera will emphasize the speed at which the subject is moving. In my case, I did use a gimbal just to get extra stabilization and to get a bit lower to the ground when filming. But you can also do this and hold. But please, when you shoot a video like this, please be careful. I almost fell a few times while getting the shot. Whoa! Oh, oh. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, oh. You okay? Yo. This has become a very popular thing that people like to add to their videos. If you watch any filmmakers on YouTube or Instagram, then you have definitely seen the shot before. So to get this effect, you will need to make sure that your shutter speed is 1 10th or 1 over 10, and you will need an ND filter to bring your exposure down without changing your shutter speed. Once you have done this, then you can move your camera around to get short snippets and videos that you can add to your video as a quick effect. There are many other ways to use the slow shutter effect, but this is just one way I like to use it. This is a nice way to show the viewer a different perspective of your scene, especially if it is on a table. You can do the shot with a tripod, stand, or do it handheld. If you are doing it handheld, then what I like to do is, is slowly rotate your camera while moving away from the object. This just helps with revealing the object you are filming. I've done this a few times when filming products or food on a table. For this shot, you will need a tripod or very still hands. But using a tripod is easier and then you don't need any extra help when filming. What you want to do is, is get your object placed in frame where you want it to be and then make sure it is in focus. Once the object is in focus, make sure your lens is switched to manual. Then the next step is to start filming and then take the object out of frame. After all this, all you have to do is reverse the footage in post and then you get a clean shot of your object getting placed in frame and in focus. I've used this a few times for my client shoots. This is an easy way to make your footage stand out. When filming outside or on a beach, always keep an eye out for any possible reflections from the water on the ground. I love to film the reflections that the ocean leaves on the sand, but sometimes you do have to wait a few minutes for the water to settle down to get a clear view of the reflection. If you get low enough, you can get some really nice shots. I did this years ago when I first started filmmaking and when it was a trend back in the day. But recently I've seen a few people use this trick again. So for the shot, you'll need a tripod and some constant light. I prefer to do the shot inside and at night because then I have more control over my lighting. All you have to do is just film yourself in a few different positions and film one scene when you're not in frame to have as a backup when editing. Then all the magic will happen in post. All you have to do in post is bring the videos on the timeline and have them layered above each other. You must also remember to to make sure that the empty frame shot is at the bottom of the layers. Then mask out each clone and now you have multiple characters of yourself in frame. Also, if you're wondering about what lights I used for the shot, I used the Nanlite FC500B LED and the TL60 
and the TL30 Godox tube lights. I'll do an in-depth video in the future about how I light the scene, but to give you a quick summary on this scene specifically, we place the FC500B light outside to shine through the window and act as a backlight to the subject. Then we use two tube lights to give a bit of full light where needed. But yeah, those are some ideas I use when filming and I hope you guys learned something new while watching this video. I also would just like to give a big thanks to the people who helped with this video. To Stephen Foster on the BTS, Makal and Michal as the models, and Juan for lending his light stand and for just being a legend. They all helped make this video possible and you can find all the Instagrams in the description below. Have a blessed day and I'll see you soon. Cheers.